Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch launched in 2021, and it is my Grail watch. Sure, there may be watches made in dozens of pieces or less or priced at hundreds of thousands of dollars or more. But within the real world of series produced watches that I could conceivably buy with a few years of planning and prioritization, this Patek Philippe 5236P is it for me. A watch that combines a gorgeous case, immense history, a great brand, tremendous innovation, and one of my favorite complications. This is 41.3 millimeters of perpetual calendar bliss. So, in platinum, and you know it's platinum because it's a Patek with a top Vesselton diamond between the lugs at six. 41.3 millimeters in diameter. It is 11.3 millimeters thick, 48.5 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. 21 millimeters is the spacing between the lugs. We're going to throw it on my wrist. You're going to get a good sense of it. Now, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference oval across the top. The watch wears well. The watch wears flat, but you can see those lugs are getting towards the end of my wrist. Not over. They're not over the edge. But I think that if you're much smaller than my wrist, you're going to have some issues. So I'd say 15 centimeters circumference wrist or larger. That said, it's a very flat watch. And you can see with a sloped case flank and a low profile, it will fit underneath a dress cuff. The strap is an unusual one for Patek as we have medium rectangular scale alligator leather, a cut the company doesn't use often. Gloss finish, dark blue. You can see there is a folded edge, a monotone stitch, calfskin on the bottom, brand new Patek Philippe factory strap, pull tab spring bars on each end. So you can quickly remove the strap from the case without tools. We have a single fold platinum deployant clasp and it has a Calatrava cross on its buckle. You hear it snap shut. It is a friction fit clasp. The case inspired by the historic early 60s to early 80s Patek Philippe 3448 perpetual calendars and then the early to mid 80s reference 3450. Similar perpetual calendar watches, the difference being a leap year phase indicator. But here we have a case that's very similar to both of them with a sheer cylindrical mid case, sharp angular lugs, and then a very hard pronounced conical bezel. Calatrava cross on a large crown. You can see that the bezel stepped in from the mid case a little bit to thin out the watch visually. And this is platinum ultra white. You could see anything here but gray gold. It is perfectly white. There's no warmth whatsoever. It is cold as ice the way platinum is. And you can see the little pusher correctors that are used for adjusting the calendar. Much to say about this calendar. Historically, it would have been seen in Patek Philippe pocket watches with perpetual calendars like the 725, the 699, the 843, and the 844. That inline system was used there, but until this watch, never in a wrist watch. A perpetual calendar doesn't need to be touched until the year 2100. And we have a moon phase with an adjustment interval of once every 122 years. You can see we've got a day-night indicator. Blue means night, silver white means day. We'll move that minute hand out of the way. You can see we have a leap year phase indicator, a nicely balanced dial, bilateral symmetry, split it down the middle, and each side is a mirror of the other. Now, this is described as the American style calendar because it has the day, a double digit date, and then the month. And that's how we write it here in the United States. You can also see that it is blueprint on white, which makes it a wonderful match for the dial, almost an inverse of the dial. And we have two sets of coplanar discs, so four discs total. Three patents went into this calendar system. And just to give you an idea of how much more complex this watch is than the outwardly and mechanically similar 5235 regulator. The same basic movement in the 5235 has 313 parts. This has 503. Now, the dial has a satin finish, like metallic satin, like brushed stainless steel. It goes from top to bottom as on the regulator, but here it is a dark blue with a gradient fade, so it is lighter at the center and dark at the edge, but it's not an exaggerated fade like you'll find on a Moser Fumé dial. It's subtle. We have outboard a railroad-style track with a slightly shifted blue tone for reading your minutes, and then we've got a radially arrayed and faceted applied white gold hour indices. We have white gold and faceted hands at center, 
very different from the regulator in that this is a conventional dial. We don't have hours, minutes, and seconds on separate registers. Where we do have seconds here, you'll note we also have hacking or stop seconds coaxial with the moon face. So if you want, you can set this watch precisely to a reference time. And although you probably can't see it well here, we do have that gradient fume fade and the satin finish that runs from top to bottom. Turn it all over. We have that extraordinary 31260 movement. This, of course, is the PS for Petite Second, and then QL for Quantième, or Perpetual Calendar, and Lunaire for the Moon. Now, it's 34 millimeters in diameter, one millimeter larger than the same movement in the regulator. So you can see not only does it have a lot more parts and more complexity, but it is broader to fill this large case back. We have both finish and architecture, as you can see, one two, three different sizes of engine turned perlage. We have both circular and linear Cote de Genève, and you can see this is a very modern take on Geneva waves, as here they're super broad, almost like something you'll see on our, an artisanal boutique brand watch. Really broad, abrasive wheel Cote de Genève laid down the stripes across the bridges. The anglage is very good, likely started by mechanical means, but finished by hand, probably using a handheld buffing tool at the end of a drill bit, because you can see it really is bright and mirrored. It doesn't look like someone went over this with a milling tool and then left it after one pass. This has been handsomely finished. We have the barrel, which produces 20% more torque than in the regulator. We have the rotor, which is no longer the 22 karat gold of the regulator. It is now platinum for greater winding efficiency. All of this with a 48-hour power reserve. It beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, and it has a conventional escapement with metal anchor, metal escape wheel, and pallet stones. Uh, this is in comparison to the silicon system in the regulator, which operated at the quirky beat rate of 23,000 40 vibrations per hour, but we do still have the six position adjustment, the gyromax style free sprung balance, and the guarantee that along with the Patek Philippe seal and the anti-magnetic Spiromax silicon hairspring, we've got guaranteed accuracy of no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day from the factory. Again, all of this pivoting on 55 joules. You could see that they probably chickened out on the interior angles. You could see these little curves on each one of the finger bridges. It's rounded and rather gradual. I would have loved to have seen inward angles here, but the good news is we do get a lot of outward angles, which are just as challenging to finish as inward angles. You can see here, 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 as well as the edge of each one of these finger bridges. We do have those sharp outward points where bevels come together. That's also very difficult to achieve. And then we have satinated wheels with black polished screw heads that have chamfered slots and circumference if you get really close. And we have a rotor that sits on ceramic unlubricated bearings for high efficiency winding, all of this water resistant down to 30 meters. And the architecture is quite attractive. Don't mistake this for a variant of the 240 micro rotor. This is a larger modern generation automatic micro rotor movement. It's bigger. It has a different architecture. The bridges you can see down from the barrel all the way to the escape wheel, we have these pocket watch style finger bridges. It is good looking. It is properly sized, and it has the legs to drive a power-intensive complication like this. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.